Head over to TimCast.com, click join us to become a member and support our show directly. We rely on your membership to make clips like this. Now, back to the show. Here we go from CNN.com. Vance reopens line of attack into Waltz's military record as two veterans now vie to be vice president. Heck of a headline there. I love this happening now. Kamala Harris speaks at rally in Michigan. Let me just X that out because we don't care. They say Donald Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, stepped up his attacks on Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz's portrayal of his military career, accusing him without evidence of ducking service in Iraq when he left the Army National Guard and ran for Congress in 2005. Vance also accused Waltz of falsely claiming he had served in combat in, in a combat zone while the Democratic vice presidential nominee was in the Army National Guard. While Waltz retired two months before his unit received alert orders to deploy to Iraq, the attacks on Waltz's military record are part of the race, are part of the race from, from both parties to define the relatively unknown governor. OK, so I'll just pause there. If you get your news from CNN, I feel sorry for you. And that's why we highlight this first. I have got so much evidence it is going to make your head spin. How about this first one from Jack Posobiec? This is an article from 2005, a press release. Walt still planning to run for Congress despite possible call to duty in Iraq for immediate release, March 20th, 2005. They knew in advance. They say on Thursday, March 17th, the National Guard Public Affairs Office announced a possible partial mobilization of roughly 2,000 troops in the Minnesota National Guard. First district congressional candidate, Tim Waltz, currently holds the rank of Command Sergeant Major in the 1-125th Battalion, which is based in New Ulm and largely composed of men and women from southern Minnesota. When asked about his possible deployment to Iraq, Walt said, I do not yet know if my artillery unit will be part of this mobilization, and I am unable to com comment further on specifics of the deployment. Others have come out calling him a traitor who abandoned his men, bypassing the chain of command so that he can get relieved and then go run for office. I don't know if that's true, but I can tell you, evidence certainly suggests he did know he would be deploying and decided he would leave instead. Now, a lot of people have, have come out and said, no, no, he was planning his retirement months in advance. That's true. However, many commenters and many other veterans have stated that when deployment orders were, were in the pipelines, many of them stalled their plans to intentionally serve their country, knowing they would need to be deployed. Tim Waltz is being criticized for not doing that, for deciding to leave. And now, and, and there's, look, even if someone else came in, I don't think it's fair to call him a traitor because he didn't want to deploy. I think it's more just like, I don't know, to, 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 to do something like this. And then later, from the Washington Free Beacon, Tim Waltz falsely claimed he served in Afghanistan when a local vet called him out. His office did nothing. Come on. Do I, I, I'll just play this video because CNN is garbage. We're going to play this video for you. You can listen. You can hear, you can hear what he said for, for yourselves. Hope woke up like many of you did five weeks ago and Dad said, Dad, you're the only person I know who's in elected office. You need to stop what's happening with this. I'll take my kick in the butt for the NRA. I spent 25 years in the Army and I hunt. And I gave the money back and I'll tell you what I have been doing. I've been voting for common sense legislation that protects the Second Amendment, but we can do background checks. We can do CDC research. We can make sure we don't have reciprocal carry among states. And we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. Yeah, heard it. He said he carried weapons of war in war. Uh, homie, uh, according to Wikipedia, we're going to use Wikipedia uh, because the source is actually task and purpose. They say he uh, deployed to Italy and uh, in support of Operation, Operation Enduring Freedom. He did not deploy to Iraq, Afghanistan or a combat zone during his service. So uh, what do you guys think? Is that stolen valor? At least it's not legally stolen valor. But many people are calling it stolen valor. It's definitely implied valor at the very least, it, right? It, it's pathetic. It's pathetic is what it is. He's trying to run for office under false pretense. He's trying to say he's a veteran. He fought in a war. He did all these great things. What did he do in Italy with sip cappuccinos with bombs going overhead? It wasn't World War II. No, you didn't see combat. So don't act like you saw combat. It's very simple. It's a disgrace. It's just they're all liars. The whole ticket over there is just a bunch of frauds and phonies. It's disgusting. And he just he, he needs to resign, frankly. Do you think that Americans will Design. make the distinction? Will like, Americans make the distinction? They'll, be, they'll hear, oh, well, he was in the National Guard. He was in the Army. If the blah, media blah, blah. lets them hear the facts, CNN without evidence, there's all the evidence. Tim just read the evidence. Let them hear two minutes of that. People are just going to understand this very quick. Kamala's well, a liar about her means. past. He's a liar about his past. It's a ticket of liars. Here's, here's more evidence from CNN themselves. How about that? 
Waltz did make a comment, speaking to a group, he's done it a couple of times, where he has used language that has suggested that he carried weapons in a fighting situation. As you know, with your contact with the military, I know from coming from a military family, there is a difference between being in a combat area, being involved at a time of war, and actually being in a position where people are shooting at you. There is no evidence that at any time Governor Waltz was in a position of being shot at, and some of his language could easily be seen to suggest that he was. So that is absolutely false when he said that about about uh, gun rights out there. So Waltz this is, uh, we refer to this as assumptive language, and I'll give you a simple uh, 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 Well, you can look at what he says and understand the basics of it. I served in Operation Enduring Freedom. And the assumption people then make from that is that you're in the Middle East. No, he was in Italy. So if I said something like, guys, for dinner, I really want to get these amazing steaks, these beautiful thousand dollar steaks for each and every one of us. And if you show up to work early tomorrow, I'm going to get I'm going to do everything I can to get you these thousand dollar steaks. And then when everyone shows up, I go. Everybody, I did it. I got dinner and everyone's cheering. Yeah. The assumption is I got the dinner I promised. Mm -hmm. But then when uh, the end of the shift comes around, there's pizza and it cost me 20 bucks. Tricking people by using language that would lead a reasonable reasonable person who trusts you into believing something that is not true. That is what Tim Waltz is doing uh, because he's a scumbag. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Every, everything about him is disgusting. Every policy he's espoused is horrible. Everything well, which, about which 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 of the, the gun control ones, the right? gun control ones. <laughs> we can get into that. We can also I mean, talk. Like, there's very few, to be completely honest. Well, he, he's just a pathetic guy with the whole pedophile bill. I mean, everything about this guy is horrible. You got to blame the state legislature of Minnesota for that one, too. Well, he could have vetoed it. Well, exactly. He I mean, he signed it. it. The thing is, he wouldn't have. Though. What I found really fascinating about Walt's story is that he, when he ran for Congress, he was in a more conservative area, and he basically postured like a moderate Democrat, right? right? And there, I hear sometimes right now, oh, he's he's the populist progressive that Kamala has added to the ticket. No. Uh, because as as governor, especially when the state became completely Democrat-controlled, both, every branch of government was led by Democrats, he was like, great, I'm totally here for any progressive thing that you guys want to get behind and i think that's what is the problem like does he have these values or was he always a progressive hiding in plain sight faking it to moderates or is he just going to do whatever his uh party around him tells him to do i mean it's not a good position for us to have any kind as of you go up the political chain you come under more scrutiny from the media and others as you should and it, it seemed like he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar here clearly embellishing a little bit not the craziest embellishment but obviously trying to make him seem like he has more credibility with vets and stuff like that i'm surprised the kamala harris campaign didn't catch it sooner because i'm sure they vetted him very thoroughly and this was probably one of the focus of the Kamala Harris campaign too, like how can I reach out to like the suburban white veteran type voter and it's oh look at this jolly old former football coach and he was a veteran and like that plays well to help um, rough out the edges of Kamala Harris so to speak and now it's kind of backfiring in their face under more scrutiny it gets worse it gets worse we have this from Green Beret nap time on uh, on X He's uh, 18 series army taking naps and hunting down terrorists, politically homeless, conservative, tired of the BS. And he posted this. Hey, Tim Waltz, this you. Do you often wear our crest even though you were only National Guard with zero deployments? Never went through uh, SFAS or the Q course. And by all accounts, never even worked with special forces. Stolen valor much. Now, I got to correct you there, Greenberry, uh, buddy. He had a deployment to Italy. Ah, man, getting deployed to Italy. That sounds like a nice one. No, look, I I will say this too. Like, um... I'm not going to give him zero respect. I will, I will criticize him for, for exaggerating and claiming he did things he didn't do. But I respect anybody who's going to serve. They, they, they'll, they'll, they'll get at least a couple degrees of respect from me. However, you know, like J.D. Vance, he actually did serve yeah. in the Middle East. Uh, well, that's tremendously more respectful. I do not respect the administration, the governments that lied to get us into those wars. But the men and women, uh, J.D. Vance or Tulsi Gabbard, who, who ran full speed, to serve this country when they thought this country needed it most. I respect. Now, uh, take a look at these pictures. You got this picture of Tim Waltz. He's wearing a uh, green beret insignia, uh, baseball caps in numerous photos. And, you know, people are saying, like, it's just a baseball cap. Come on. Hold on there a minute. When the dude says, I was in the Army and I served an operation in enduring freedom, and then he puts on a green beret cap, 
Yo, come on. You know what he's trying to trick people into thinking, that he's special forces who actually was in combat. And then he lies and says, I carried weapons of war in war. Now that deserves zero respect. It is an an indignity. It it deserves scorn. Yeah, it, it cancels out what he did in the military, if you ask me. It really cancels most of what he did out because it's disgusting to try to falsify everything to get people who want to vote for you because of your service to vote for you under something you never did. It's a disgraceful lie. It really is. And it just shows to his character. It shows the kind of person he is. And it's just the kind of person that she is. They will say anything they need to any audience to get them to believe it so they can walk into that White House and ruin this country. Say whatever you need to say. He's the Midwestern dad. No, he's not. They, no, he's not. Can I, just, can I just say this? The Democrats have a contingent that hate Jews so much yeah. that they chose Waltz over Shapiro. And did you see Shapiro's speech at that PA rally? It was a he, good speech. He did a good job. Good speech. And uh, I saw a lot of conservatives being like, well, I'm glad they didn't pick this guy. But you know what's funny is conservatives understood what Shapiro did well in speaking at that rally. But Democrats understand as well that progressives will not vote for a Jewish man who has pro-Israel views. Can you elaborate more on that? Because I think that um, people have been, Democrats have been calling that a Republican line of attack. I actually caught up with Senator John Fetterman at the Philadelphia rally yesterday and asked him this question about him being, uh, do you think if his pro-Israel bona fides is what helped drag him away from that? And he said no. So a lot of Dems are trying to cover for this. Well, and, of course. Uh, and it also makes the Democrats look bad to say that, though. But Progressives you know. wrote a letter saying, do not pick this man right. because Arabs, Muslims, and young people will not support him. We don't like his views on Israel. On CNN, you had numerous commentators, including a, a, recently this was a George W. Bush, uh, was he an advisor or something? I don't know. He worked in the administration, I think. And he, there, this is not just a right-wing point. This has been widely, look, let me put it this way. If what they're claiming about Shapiro was true, that no, no, it has nothing to do with that. Corey Bush and Jamal Bowman would still be in office. Mm, Or or they would have won their primaries. True. But uh, Democrats do not like people. uh, Like, you you get my point. You get my point. And I think Shapiro has something like a 60% approval rating. very popular in Pennsylvania. Um, And I know the Republicans are eyeing Pennsylvania very aggressively, but I'm trying to think of the past few elections uh, when Mastriano lost to Fetterman and Bob Casey was there as their senior senator there. So, I mean... It's tough. Pennsylvania is, we, we think about it every like four years for Republicans. It's usually a dream. Trump got it in 16 by a very slim margin. We, we, you know, if we get it, we get it. We don't necessarily need it for the map. There is a map without it. There is no map for the Democrats without it, though. Their, you, their math does not work. Let me, I, w- I want to rephrase what I, what I just said to clarify, because I don't know if it was clear enough. Cory Bush and Jabal Moman were, uh, they, they, their campaigns were outspent by support from, I think it was APAC directly. Was it APAC directly? Direct. Or the United Democracy Project, right. because this right. is within the Democratic primary. Right. I think it was United Something Democracy like Project. That. Progressive leftists face windfalls of cash against them for being anti-Israel. These are people who won in the first place on these positions. AOC was resilient to this. It is very obvious when Cori Bush goes on stage after losing, screaming, what did she say? Something like, I will end your kingdom. Yeah, I will tear your kingdom down. Is that what she said? Yes. That dem that there is a lot. She got what fifty thousand votes. I didn't. Look so that so way. Democrats know for sure that if they choose someone like Shapiro, they are going to lose large swaths of votes. And the interesting thing is, I wonder if it's not so much that they were they were facing real damage from the anti-Semitic portions of their par- a party, and anti-Israel. I know it's not they're mo- they're not the same thing, but. In Minnesota, they may have lost Minnesota if they got Shapiro because um, was it, uh, it occurred? Michigan? Michigan is the one Michi- they really were going to lose. Dearborn, right. it's where all the Muslims were thrown. But in. you've got Somali Muslims. Oh, uh, I know. Well, massive was, population. So and they, that's why they picked Tim Walz. He's basically a Somalian. I they, mean, it's they could have lost Michi- Michigan and Wisconsin over someone who had. Did you did you see the things that Shapiro had said? In, yeah, he in was in the IDF when he was. He was well, in, he, he didn't he, he didn't serve in a military role. He served in like a volunteer role, like doing uh, okay. dishes or something. Sort of similar um, to Tim Walls, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe even less. <laughs> I think they they really were mad. The anti-Israel people were very mad at Shapiro because he said he didn't believe in a two-state solution or it wasn't ready, um, or the Palestinians are too violent for a two-state solution. Uh, uh, he's not wrong. 
um, on that, I don't think. Um, I also think there's an important distinction we need to make between like um, the anti-Israel sentiment that we are seeing within the Democrat Party. I think there is a portion of the, there is a way to criticize Israel without being anti-Semitic. The question is how many of the people who are criticizing Israel and are anti-Shapiro are doing that out of their bigotry. Thanks for watching this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe and we'll see you all there.